Now, a study published in the Journal of Geomorphology uh, says that global warming is a reason the Bata Gaika crater in Sir Siberia is growing larger. It's also known as the Gate uh, to Hell, a crater which releases thousands of tons of CO2 every year. It's also expanding at a record speed. To talk more about this, we can bring in Julia Seeger. Julia, firstly, did I pronounce that uh, crater you right? Did. I'm not sure. I did? Okay. <laughs> um, so now there are two places in the world that have almost the same name here. Of course, we're talking about the Bata Gaika crater in Siberia and not the one in Uzbek in Turkmenistan. That's right. I, I think it's important to, to touch on this because a lot of people confuse them. There's the Gate to Hell, uh, which is the Batagak Crater. It's located in Siberia. That's what we're going to, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but there's also the Gateway to Hell, which is uh, uh, located this time in Darvaza, Turkmenistan. And this is a natural gas field. Uh, we've actually spoke about it here uh, during a segment, a science segment. You can find it on our website. But pretty much it's a 30-meter uh, deep gas crater uh, that has been on fire uh, since 1971 when uh, Soviet petrochemical scientists decided to light it on fire to get rid of a gas leak uh, that revealed itself because of a release uh, of, a, uh, of a land collapse. Uh, but once again, you can find that on uh, our website. Today we're talking about the Bata Gaika uh, crater. It's called a crater, but it's actually a mega slump, um, which is growing over time. It was first spotted in the 1960s thanks to classified satellites, and it's now expanding and has been for the last 60 years. And and it really went from this insignificant ravine to this huge tadpole. You're going to see it really looks like a tadpole. Tadpole-shaped uh, slump that covers 200 acres, is one kilometer long, and in some areas it's 100 meters deep. So from 1991 to 2018, it actually tripled in size. And you can see that on the satellite images, uh, thanks to the European program Copernicus, which uses uh, the satellites, uh, the Sentinel satellites. And what actually was said in the study that you just mentioned is that um, this mega slump is due to the thawing of permafrost. Now, this is what we thought, uh, but it's now confirmed. Now, what is permafrost? To understand, you have to understand what permafrost is. Well, as the name suggests, it's part of the ground that is permanently frozen. So what happens is under the effect of heat, the ice, which cements the subsoil, is going to, uh, subsoil that is deep, of course, deep down, is going to melt and turn into water, and that is going to create subsidence. And hence, uh, subsequently, the, the surface of the earth is going to create sinkholes. Now, what actually started that, the thawing of permafrost, was the deforestation during the Soviet era. Uh, and without that plant cover of the mm. earth, the sun was able to really hit and heat uh, the soil, and hence that's a good news for science because on one hand, when the permafrost uh, melts, it releases a lot of uh, uh, organic matter. That means also animals, plants from the ice age, from the last ice age. And uh, they were actually able to uh, find a horse, a baby horse. You're going to see here a very well-preserved skin, hair, and tail. And what's interesting is that it yielded the oldest sample of liquid blood ever found. Well, this is all fascinating, but also on the downside, it is releasing greenhouse gases. It, it, exactly. So it's releasing a lot of organic matter, but also a lot of gases that were previously trapped uh, inside the earth. And what you should know is that permafrost soil actually contains twice as much carbon. So this is why we say that it's releasing so much carbon. And of course, it's a vicious circle because the more it releases, the more it melts, the more it releases carbon and methane in the atmosphere, the more, it, the warmer it gets. And as you can understand, it's a vicious circle. And it's likely to continue to grow. It is likely to continue to grow. At the same time, there are natural barriers that exist today around the crater. So with a mountain on one side and a ravine on the other that are, co are considered stabilized today. Uh, so it could stop at one point. But I think what's more interesting is that it's a warning sign for other areas in the world, in the Arctic region. Let it be, uh, for instance, um, uh, it could happen, let's say, in Alaska or Canada. There are other ravines, craters uh, in, uh, in Siberia, like the C-17 crater. Uh, but I spoke about this one today because, of course, it's the most significant, the most spectacular, uh, and the one that is perhaps uh, a worrying scientist the most. Julia, thank you very much for that, Julia Seeger there.